Uh, yeah. Let me try this again. Guys, are that. That was right. So, already forgotten the order of those arguments. Second area is the source. First area is the destination. We need n bytes, which is an int, which I think is going to need a from integral on it as well, but let's just wait and see. Let's start here. So that should let us upload our vertices. Let's see if I got that correct. Got all those imports. So yeah, we're basically just doing a mem copy from the underlying data of this vertex list. Um, we could probably tidy that later. It's certainly not the responsibility of this module. Um, so definitely some refactoring to do there. Okay. I need to cast that point there. Oh, I don't have foreign. Bytes also needs to be turned into an int. That's the vertex buffer code working. So I think the next bit of coupling. Yeah, it's in the pipeline, which is where we specified our vertex layout. So let's have a look and see what we've got here. Vertex shader stage, vertex input state. Still not seeing the vertex stride, which I thought we had to specify. Ah, there it is, okay. Right, so the stride is okay. We just need to tune those. Oh, sorry, the stride isn't okay, but it's coming from this vertex type, which I've been is okay in the sense I can easily go and change what that is. So, quite three vertex. Do 
that actually fine. Yeah, actually, that's that's the one I wanted. So the size of B pause, size of B so B. If anyone knows a library that gives me like C structs with generic deriving, that'd be really handy as well. Because uh, yeah, typing this stuff out by hand is tedious, but pretty error prone as well. I think we actually need any more of the storable interface. Like we should be specifying more of it, but I don't think we actually need any more of it. If we just use it to get a size of a vertex. Positions are offset zero. Colors, however, are not RGB thirty-two S float. So that needs to change, but they're also RGBA, and their offset is not that either. is There is one apparently, so I think that's in response to my wanting a way to generically derive storable, because these are all tightly packed. Um, okay, so RG, mm, it's like R8 though, does that exist? I guess maybe it's like UNT. Complaining, yeah, about this. So this is cool. So we can get rid of this hard-coded sort of planes and Q3 DM1. 
can just be load BSP, um, you can have a Raspberry file function now. Indices, same type of thing, that's mesh, mesh verts, yeah. Bunch of missing imports. Let's actually put that in the correct file. BSV vertexes, uh, I did actually correct that questionable typo. Alright, so everything's there. I don't know what this is going to do. Um, we might have a level. We might also not see it because it might be in some weird position and we might have to work out how to get to a sensible zero zero or something like that, but or of course it could just crash entirely. Uh, missing field in record construction indices. Ah, so we didn't fill this in. What's that needed for?
Right, yeah. Uh, cool. So that's quite easy to come up with. Uh, we can actually get it from right here. So let n indices is mesh vert list bytes, psv mesh verts, q3dm1. amount of bytes and there are four bytes per index Probably a reasonable assumption there. We need to update our shader. Uvec four. Uh, no, it was the verb, wasn't it? with everything but we certainly can't see anything and what if we maybe it's because our clip planes are just far too close so let's just throw them way out for now which I think is part of our projection matrix actually isn't it uh, it's got nothing to do with the pipeline so our Perspective matrix goes from 0.1 units to 1,000. Let's just run that way out. And see if that gets us anything. Doesn't. No. Oh, hello. What's this? <laughs> I think we're going to need to increase our acceleration as well, and it looks pretty. I don't know if that, that doesn't look like Q3DM1 to me. But there's something there. Uh, no colours. Which seems surprising as well. Everything's white. Uh, so let's bump this up to. Hmm, a bit of duplication here, that should probably get away. I think the, uh, the Quake guy runs at like 300 units per second. Uh, it's like his normal running speed, and you can obviously straight jump to an even quicker speed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like something, that's not right. Well, I didn't change the straight speed, that's a bit annoying. But yeah, that to me suggests. We've got something really screwed up there. What did we do wrong? Hmm, maybe 
is drawing all of those mesh verts just in one big go doesn't make any sense. But I'm still surprised that there's no colour. Like, that's kind of bugging me. Um, that might actually just be because... Got to scale these, maybe. Cool. So, whoa, weird. I mean, you can kind of see the light mapping. I mean, it's a pretty cool demo scene thing. <laughs> uh, like this, this. Mm, I don't know. Colours kind of look correct, but stuff's in really weird positions, like even the vertex positions don't seem correct, um, it doesn't even look, even from the top or anything, like Q3DM1. Okay. So this is just, all this does is copy stuff, stuff into a buffer, doesn't really do anything interesting. Probably nothing there, I suggest it's in the pipeline, that's the only place where we specify this input. Hmm. The size of a vertex, right? Because that can uh, that can do it. Looks correct. Maybe then we do need to look at parsing these faces, which give us mesh verts and end mesh verts, so an offset into that index buffer and the amount of things to draw. I mean, certainly the intention is not going to be ever to draw the entire index buffer in one go, but um, I thought it should have given us a sensible view onto the world. Okay, let's uh, yeah, maybe let's try and go through the faces and see if we can get something there. How are we doing on time? No, that's not too bad. Stare at that a little bit more. Oh, I mean, that's strange glitchiness, probably just some Z fighting. Why? Ah, actually, you know what? I think there's some odd. You almost have to swizzle some of the uh, vertex coordinates as well, I seem to remember. I think it's stored in like YXZ or something. So 
There's another Quake 3 BSP document. Which I think might mention this. Quake 3 uses a coordinate system where the x axis points east, the y axis points south, and the z axis points vertically downward. So what are they doing? Swapping Y and Z. Y becomes Z. Z becomes minus Y. Not worried about that. What does that be? Yeah, I mean it's still it's just going to be a transpose mess, right? Not going to suddenly fly away. Are the vertices in the right place? Hard to say. Yeah, they are definitely UN32, so that's all correct as well. Yeah, so somebody just pointed out, just transposing the coordinates shouldn't really have made a difference, and obviously it didn't anyway. Just thought it might, like, even if, if everything's rotated 90 degrees through one axis, it's kind of hard for me to visualise if that even looks like the vertices are in the correct place. Um... Let's have a look at maybe rendering a single face then. So, I'll hard cope this. So if we go into faces, uh, I need to like nest this run get. So, uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't think we need to worry about the face vertex and the face and vertexes. We're just concerned with mesh vert. So I'm just transcribing out this uh, C struct into something that we're going to parse into.
formatting that later. Uh, do Right, so uh, let's see, BSP faces is going to be data, whoa, binary get run get. Faces, yeah. We're doing that's down here. Replicate, yeah, face. For now, uh, mm, I suppose I could do it here, couldn't I? is four bytes float is four bytes That's one way to do it. Oh, now I'm not convinced I got that right, though. <laughs> I'm just 
suppose I could have just counted the amount of fours here actually, it would have made more sense, wouldn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, four, twenty five, twenty six. Maybe he wants to double check that, that might be good. But to be honest, I'm only going to look at the first one of these anyway, so I suppose it doesn't really matter. Uh, so the idea is that by using all mesh verts, we're connecting up too many vertices and getting something gobbled. Yeah, that's. Yeah, so I agree with you. Like, it's It would be surprising that we get this like really weird stretched out thing. That's why I was kind of, like, I'd expect that like, you might get this garbled output with loads of triangles maybe intersecting each other if the offset was slightly off. But the vertices would still be in the right place, and it would roughly look like Q3DM1, which I'm familiar with the layout of that map. So I am surprised that there's, like, stuff in weird places. But let's, you know, narrow it down to just rendering a single face, um, or maybe a couple. We're going to have to do this anyway, so... Uh, in terms of this setup, it's um, pretty much just Emacs, Xmonad, and some terminals. Um, I'm using. Uh, let's see if I can find it. This is my Emacs setup. Doom Emacs. Kind of close enough to Quake Emacs, right? Uh, we don't have faces in scope, so let's bring that in. Uh, N, we don't know what that is. Oh no, N is just the wrong. Right. Um. Nah, oh, that is really fucking useful isn't it? Not enough bytes. Okay. This is looking reasonable. Texture index, that effect thing could be minus one. We've got a face type of two, so what? Mm. No, I was going to say maybe we were ending up drawing some of the, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe we were drawing patches and stuff. So a suggestion there of maybe using a simpler map. It's not a bad option. If anybody like happens to know one um, or wants to whip one up, that would be good. I don't have Q3 Radiant or anything installed to make a map. So might be a little bit of a waste of time. In the meantime, I'm going to try manually like just drawing one of these faces. So, if we got this right, uh, okay, actually this one is no good because this is a patch. So, This one is a patch. Okay, cool, we found some.
So in theory, I think this means if we rendered into our index buffer at offset 3849 and drew nine indices, we that should draw a square somewhere. It might be hard to find that square, but let's let's run with this idea. Uh, I think do this with DKC and D draw indexed. First index. I wonder if I'm meant to be using vertex offset. I feel like you might. We'll try both. Um, or shall we? Type one faces, vertex and n vertex, describe a set of vertices. Hold on. Mesh vert and n mesh vert is described and valid. Every mesh vert is an offset from the first vertex of the face. Right, so I think here's what the problem is. That mesh vert's array is actually a bunch of numbers that all have to be added to vertex. And we're not doing that at the moment. Um, so, for example, this one, my first vertex is 3818, which goes into here. My index count is six because that is my mesh verts count. And my face mesh vert is the first index, which is here. Got any GitHub? Yep. So the whole project is uh, if you get O Charles slash zero to Quake Free. Um, also, every single bit of code is all live streamed. Um, yeah, so I thought, ah, uh, I can kind of see something. What's this? Oh, and I've accidentally inverted my mouse now as well. Uh, <laughs> I've lost it. There, there. So that looks like a square. Uh, this is okay though, so rather than putting n indices in here, let's, let's just put in whole BFP. Now, I can say for all of the faces when face type is one, draw, right, what have we got to do? Face and mesh verbs. One instance, this is the vertex or the index count? First index. The vertex offset is face vertex. Yeah, so I'm saving all of the streams as highlights as well. So um, just head over to Twitch, my Twitch page, and then go into videos uh, and just filter that by highlights. Um, I'll, I'll at some point put an index together of this. Um, so. 
Right, face vertex, don't have that. Unsurprising because we didn't export it. Need when BSP is Q3 BM1. Face type. Maybe I should have just used record wildcards there, would be a bit nicer. Moment of truth. How many faces did we pull out in that replicate M? So we've got at most 500 faces, and I think it's like 26 is wrong, given that we ran out of bytes. Check that out, that looks a little bit more like a level. I don't know why it's all weirdly rotated. Let's just see if we can get all of these vertices out. Uh, so it should have been N. Bring it back to 25. Maybe I counted one too many. Okay, so that's still not enough bytes. Is that multiplication happening in the wrong place? My guess is yes. Let's put that back to 26. Is that right? If we did... Length faces times 4 divided by 26 is very different from length faces divided by 26 times 4, right? Yeah. Uh, cool, it's... Yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> Turn your head around. <laughs> uh, uh, so, like the, so everything's inverted and things are really weird, but that is definitely... Q3DM1, this is really hard to navigate because I've had to flip my mouse upside down. And I don't know why it's all like ever so slightly. Oh my god. But hey, uh, <laughs> that is definitely uh, Q3DM1 being rendered uh, in Haskell and in Vulkan. And like, this frame rate is fine as well. Like obviously, we wouldn't really expect any problems, but we're being really naive at the moment. Um, just rendering every single face. So, like for a complex map, this is going to fall apart. Um, that's pretty cool. So, just the vertex colors alone get us something light mapped, which is also quite nice. So, um, let's quit out of that. I'm just going to have a look at this swizzling again. Uh, do you use Haskell to render graphics? Yeah, so pretty much, like, the only code I'm writing is either GLSL, um, which you see here, like, that's the extent of the GLSL, uh, and everything else is in Haskell. So there's, there's no C, there's no C++ or anything. Um, all that's cool. Um, so the only thing that's suggested in this swizzling is negating the Z. that. No, I didn't recompile. I wonder 
there is a camera that's messed up. So this is upside down now. So maybe we didn't need this at all. If I flip the camera upside down, it's kind of okay, but then everything's upside down and the mouse controls are impossible to use. Hmm. The X axis points east, Y axis points south, Z axis points vertically downward. Safe means, but uh, that, that just was. Why is it nice seg vaulting? <laughs> How does that make any sense? Swizzling the vertices, or at least just putting it back to normal, now causes a seg bolt. Uh, oh, I don't know what the hell's going on there. That's weird. The Vulcan coordinate system is different from the OpenGL one, right? So yeah, maybe negate Y. I'm I can't work out if it's if we've actually compensated for that with our view matrix. There's a lot going on there. So no, no, we did we did fix that last time, didn't we? So we said that yeah, view is zero. One zero, which we're expecting to be straight up. Yeah, I think uh, I might actually leave the stream there. Um, okay, maybe not with the sake of this. I don't understand why that works. Um, but I think I'm going to leave the stream there. We, we definitely have like part of a BSP rendering. I'm quite happy to leave it there. It's not perfect, um, but it is getting on here tonight. Uh, that's probably enough streaming for today. Uh, way. So, we're close. Um, you might notice there's a couple of like missing things here. Like, uh, you can't see through this in the original Q3 DM1. Uh, I think that's because we need patches, which are like Bezier patches that we're going to have to tessellate ourselves. That's quite a complicated task. Um, probably, I don't think I ever got around to that in my previous Quake 3 renderers. Uh, but there's also models, uh, so there's meant to be some statues here which are also missing. So the models aren't too hard to add in, so we could look into doing that. Um, definitely the next thing is just working out why this is all slightly warped. 
Um, but yeah, so I'm going to push the code up to GitHub if you want to grab that and compile it. You can, you will need a copy of Q3DM1, which you can get from the Quake Free demo. I'm not going to distribute that because it's copyrighted and I don't want to piss id off because, you know, they've done enough by making this whole thing open source anyway. So grab yourself a copy of the Quake Free demo or just get any BSP from online. Uh, actually, yeah, it was just for a bit of fun. Um, let's see what happens if we load a different BSP in. Um, I think in my previous project I've got some lying around still. Somewhere. There we go. Oh no, that's this directory. Yeah, there we go. Um, what's Q3DM2? So yeah, and you'll also have to change the file names in the source code if you want to use a different file. Of course, you can just put anything as Q3DM1 that's going to work, or at least it's going to do something. depth fighting going on there, but that might just be from our huge zip buffer, which is probably a little excessive. Uh, is this upside down still? I think it was. Yeah, because that's like a lava pool or something. Textury pool. Uh, yeah, so anyway, so seems to be happy with some other different BSPs. It's going to be pretty cool on the next stream, I think, if we can get all the oddities ironed out here and just have a basic view of the kind of ambient light colour from the light mapper. Um, and then maybe look at... We could look at texturing. We could look at basic texturing. So Quake Free's got a fairly complicated shader model. Um, we will have to parse those shaders um, and compile them to... Some Vulcan calls. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so that's all working correctly as well. Uh, but that'll take a while. But you can actually get some basic texturing in if you just follow that texture index in the BSP. It's not entirely correct because it actually refers to a shader, uh, but you can just kind of hack it and stick a texture there and it works. Anyway, I'm rambling on because it's very late here and I'm absolutely shattered now. So, uh, yep, it'll all be on GitHub. Uh, next stream's probably going to be either Thursday or Friday. Friday, uh, around the same time, a little bit earlier, usually 7pm um, UTC, um, but if you want to follow more, uh, I tweet about this kind of stuff on my Twitter page, um, at Acid2, and yeah, you can also follow me on Twitch. Cheers guys, see you on the next one.